It's been a while, far too long, since we've connected with our favourite astronomer, Dr Daniel Kanema, and there is so much to catch up on. Starting with this story, astronomers have now uncovered evidence of water vapour in the atmosphere of one of Jupiter's many, many, many moons. Uh, Ganymede and Dr Dan is here to tell us more. Daniel, great to connect with you. How you been, man? Good, man, thanks. Thanks for having me back. Oh, it's so good chatting about the, the, the worlds beyond and where we exactly. could potentially end up in the future. But where do we begin, perhaps, with the fact that Jupiter has over 70 confirmed moons, I believe? Is that 70. correct? 70? 70? Yeah, I think we're up to 79 now. Jeez. Uh, it's hard to confirm them because, you know, some of them are quite small. And, you know, it's, it's hard to observe these things. But now we, we have been observing one in particular, Ganymede, and we have realised something quite interesting about it. How did they uncover evidence of water vapour in the atmosphere there? What evidence did they, they find? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a story with Ganymede. So Ganymede's the, the largest moon in our solar system. So it's quite an interesting one, uh, particularly if you're looking at, at sort of other places we could, we could visit. Uh, and way back in 98, uh, which doesn't seem that long ago for you and I, but for some people <laughs> might be. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, they, they identified magnetic fields, so it's the only moon with magnetic fields. So it's, uh -huh. a, it's, a, it's essentially like a planet or operating like a planet. And the assumption at that point was that it's got a very large ocean, so more water than we have on Earth even. But because it's very cold, uh, it's all frozen over, so there's this ice ocean. And... So there wasn't any any sort of uh, thought of of how to observe the, this water, but they suspected there might be oxygen in the atmosphere. So uh, that's why Hubble was pointed at it recently to try and identify this oxygen. And they didn't find oxygen, or they didn't find very much oxygen, but they found water vapor instead. Well, wait, wait, if I'm if my science is correct, right? <laughs> water is H two O, which means it's got hydrogen, I think, and oxygen. Doesn't that mean? Wait, wait. Before I figure that out and get my, my brain twisted, how exactly is this water vapor even formed to begin with? Yeah, you're right. Two hydrogens and one oxygen. That's water. Okay, uh, okay. The we science looking, is good. We were looking for it. <laughs> Reviewing my <laughs> intelligence on TV it was a bit nerve wracking there. <laughs> the, the, the atomic oxygen that we breathe is just two oxygens, that's O2. Uh, so that's what they were looking for. Uh, but how the water, the vapour for, formed, so there's this sea of water which now resides uh, underneath the surface. Uh, the estimate is it's about 800 kilometres deep, so very, very wow. deep. But because it's very cold, it's got a very thick crust of ice. So there's no liquid water, it's too cold for liquid water. But the water vapour that they've now observed is when in the middle of the day so it doesn't get a lot of sun but in the middle of the day at its hottest point some of this ice does something called sublimation so it sublimates and basically goes from solid to gas in one go most people have observed sublimation it's if you look at dry ice yeah you know, if you if you get some dry ice it, it just evaporates right it doesn't form a liquid in between and that's essentially what's happening here so this is what we've now observed this water vapor in the atmosphere so aside from it being like the ideal planet to shoot a music video, or, um, where you've got the sublimation just going like on, <laughs> store lots of ice cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <You> know? <laughs> um, how, how is this information, this new information about uh, Jupiter's moon, going to help us? What's the bigger picture? Yeah, so th there's new new missions going out to Jupiter soon, uh, particularly to to look at these uh, these moons, and we basically want to understand how big gas planets form, and then the the moons around them, uh, how they how they get to have so much water, you know, whether these things could sustain life. Uh, and if, if they formed four billion years ago and it's been sitting with liquid water at its core for, for that amount of time with some warmth, uh, there, there's a possibility that life could have evolved somewhere in that ocean. So trying to understand how these different environments and how they formed and evolved uh, gives us different avenues for exploring life and how it can form and evolve. This is like the stuff you used to dream of as a kid. I'm, I'm just, I'm yeah, sorry, man. I've just been going through Star Wars and like, you know, there's an ice planet and there's, you know, I, <laughs> I, I just, I love the fact that we are learning so much and our ability to process this data mm. is teaching us so much about our own planets, about our own science. It really is so exciting. Dr. Dan, you never fail to ignite the imagination <laughs> and our excitement in science, buddy. Uh, thank you so much. We, we, yeah. we love connecting with you, bro. Uh, always a pleasure.
Uh, really, it's always great catching up and covering ah, so, cool. so much of the magic, this universe and all the hidden wonders that we have. And uh, I can't wait until we get to that day. You know what day it is. When we get to that planet and we rock out. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing a moonwalk. <laughs>